My name is Charles Frederick Harvey, MD. I'm a neurosurgeon in Kankakee, Illinois, employed by Riverside Medical Group. I'm going to be talking about the diagnosis and treatment of the sacroiliac joint. I first became interested in the sacroiliac joint as a spine surgeon because I had patients coming in and telling me that they had pain in their back going down their leg and I couldn't account for that pain easily with the MRI findings that I saw. The sacroiliac joint is the main joint connecting the spine with the pelvis. It allows energy transfer between the torso and the legs. I see three major categories of patients with sacroiliac pain. One category is patients who've had trauma, for example, a fall on the buttock, a twisting injury, or even a car accident. A second category is women who have pain that's persistent in the back of the pelvis after pregnancy. In my personal experience, out of my first 100 patients with sacroiliac surgery, 24 of them had previous lumbar spine surgery. About 20% of patients who come to their doctor with low back pain actually have pain coming from the sacroiliac joint. Studies have shown that patients who have persistent back pain after lumbar surgery frequently have sacroiliac joint disorders as a source of their pain. Patients with sacroiliac joint pain have disability and pain comparable to lumbar stenosis, knee arthritis, or hip arthritis. The degree of disability can be worse than asthma, heart failure, or COPD. The diagnosis of sacroiliac joint pain requires care and attention. This isn't something where simple x-rays or an MRI or a CAT scan clearly demonstrate the diagnosis. Symptoms of SI joint pain can include low back pain radiating into the buttock or leg, hip pain, groin pain, a feeling that the leg is giving away, trouble with sleeping or pain rolling over in bed, trouble with sitting, especially putting pressure on the affected side, and pain going from sitting to standing. The pattern of pain can be similar between facet pain, sciatica, disc herniation, or sacroiliac joint pain. Careful physical exam by a trained physician can help determine whether pain is coming from the hip, the low back, or the sacroiliac joint. Some patients find that their pain is worse when they stand on the affected leg or with prolonged walking. Other patients complained of pain with sexual intercourse or changing positions. Patients sometimes describe that their pain is better if they shift their weight away from the affected side, they lie on the unaffected side, and some patients have relief from a back brace or sacroiliac belt. A set of five physical examination maneuvers that put specific stress on the sacroiliac joint help us narrow down the diagnosis and demonstrate that the sacroiliac joint is the cause of the pain. If the patient's history, physical examination, and pain provocation tests suggest the SI joint is the source of the pain, then we consider diagnostic SI injections. A diagnostic injection is done under x-ray guidance to make sure that the injection is in the right place. We use lidocaine or novocaine like when you go to the dentist office. If there is 50 to 75 percent improvement in the pain, even briefly, that's a sign that the sacroiliac joint is the source of the pain. The patient is asked to keep track of their pain before the procedure and after, and sometimes keep a pain diary for the first few hours after the injection. If they have significant improvement, then we like to think that's the spot that's causing the pain. Most patients with sacroiliac pain do not need surgery. The range of treatment options available to a patient include medications, physical therapy, external support like a brace or a sacroiliac belt, therapeutic SI injections 
where cortisone is added. Radiofrequency ablation is another possible treatment that is given by some pain management physicians. Traditional open sacroiliac fusion is a big surgery, relatively bloody, and has a long recovery. Recent advances in minimally invasive sacroiliac fusion offer a new option. The iFuse implant system is a technique for minimally invasive stabilization and fusion of the sacroiliac joint. The unique triangular shape of these implants minimizes rotation and movement of the implants, providing immediate stabilization of the joint. This is done under x-ray guidance through an inch and a half long incision under general anesthesia. A series of specialized tools are used to prepare the bone for placement of three triangular iFuse implants. Final x-rays are taken to confirm proper placement safely within bone and away from the exiting nerves. I participated in the first national multicenter randomized controlled trial of minimally invasive sacroiliac joint fusion. In the INSIGHT trial, 148 patients were randomized to surgical treatment with the iFuse system or best medical management for six months. Patients who received the iFuse implants had significant improvement in their postoperative pain, described less disability and an improvement in their quality of life. For more information about diagnosis and treatment, please see the SI Bone website.